Hey, join my Discord. We have free weekly giveaways and do weekly boss events. Okay, here's the video. So I passed up a 1 billion value bank for the second time the other week. We're not going to talk about the first time it happened because mentioning how I lost over 200 mil on TOA gear might put me back on suicide watch, and we certainly don't want that. Passing up one bill did get me thinking on what gear I bought over the years, what I've held on to, what I've gotten the most value out of, and what I wish I wouldn't have bought. Ah fuck, there it is again! Ah. In this video, I would like to give you advice on how to spend your money on gear. I'll have some different monetary thresholds to look at, but my goal is to give you guys the knowledge to make informed decisions on your purchases. There's just one tiny little thing I want you to listen to first. The disclaimers. First off, buying gear is most effective when you have a specific activity in mind. However, I'm making this video with the idea that we're buying for general purpose PVM scaping. I personally don't like to sell my gear back and forth a lot, and I'm going to assume that you don't either. Certain pieces of gear can be obtained for zero cost, and I'll be sprinkling them in as free options. And lastly, I'm just using today's price on items. Prices obviously fluctuate, but I'll do my best to value the items a little outside of the range if I feel like it's noteworthy. With all that out of the way, we can start talking about baby's first one mil and what to get with it. Since we're going to be talking in a general sense on what to buy, I think it's important to take all combat styles into consideration, and what better place to start than with melee gear. The base melee setup here is going to be quite strong for the price point since we can utilize a lot of free options that are powerful. If anything, I would say maybe we can cut the warrior ring because it's an item that will be replaced later with just a straight upgrade. Beyond the base set, you definitely want to get a dragon dagger for specking, and proselyte gear is extremely cheap prayer gear that's great for certain slayer tasks and even bursting. Other than that, we have some free options on the side as well. Arc Light covers demons, the Salve Amulet covers undead, the Dragonfire Shield can be used for protection with any combat style, and Void is free to obtain and can be best in slot for certain activities. Moving on to range, you'll see we have some free options along with some of the melee gear that's good for all three combat styles. Magic Shortbow Imbued is great, it's like a budget blowpipe. The Explorer's Ring, not really needed but there isn't exactly an alternative. The Ceridoman Coif isn't the cheapest blessed dehyde to get, but later down the road it can definitely be used as a God Wars dungeon protection piece. On top of the base set, you'll probably want a crossbow with an offhand for those tankier monsters like dragons. The only other thing of note is that the Shazen Boots 5 are actually better than Snakeskin Boots, but they're just a little bit harder to unlock, even if they are free. If you can get them, use them. Magic is probably going to be a bit on the weaker side. To hit the big numbers, you really need to spend a bit more money than we have access to right now. I figure Ivan Blast is the goal here for a cheap spell. If you can't get the imbued god cape, at least aim for the unimbued one. The beacon ring could be replaced with the lunar ring. Both are free quest rewards, but in truth, they really don't provide too much benefit. You know, they're not a priority. I guess if you're still using bolt spells, you'll want to get yourself the chaos gauntlets and an elemental battle staff of your choosing. But hopefully your magic level is higher than that. So adding everything up, we're only at 750k. Because of that, we're going to be making a down payment on some Barrows Gloves. They're going to be your best gloves in all three combat styles for a very long time. This brings us up to 880k, and I will present you with three options to round out the 1 mil. You can keep the change, have it for potions, ammo, charges, you know, things of that nature. Option 2, you can buy an ancient staff if you feel like you'll be bursting a lot or using ancient magics for some other reason. This also will leave you with a little bit of money left over. Or option 3, buy some dragon boots. This will really cement melee as your strongest base set, and these boots aren't going to be replaced for a long time. That is going to do it for our first 1 million coins though. Now we're going to step it up a notch. Moving forward, we're going to be building off what the last tier ended with. Certain items might be replaced, but they can usually be held onto as like low risk wilderness items. Of course, you can do what you want with your gear, but I'll specifically say if we think we should sell something back. So 10 million coins seems like a big jump in cash, but really we're just getting a few new things. They are very big new things though, and we're going to be focusing on weapons. I'm just going to lay it all out there. We're going to get a whip, a blowpipe, a smoke staff plus tome of fire, and a fury amulet. Now this breaks the rules, we're a little bit over budget. If we sell a few items, which I don't want to do, 
We can get closer to under 9 mil, but still not quite there. So gun to my head, to keep the new stuff under 9 mil, this is what I suggest. We don't get the Fury Amulet, but instead we'll pick up an Occult Necklace and a Black Mask. The Necklace will help boost our magic setup where it was lacking, and I just think it's safe to assume that everybody levels Slayer, and a Slayer Helm cannot be beat in usefulness. This leaves us with 520k, but I feel like that money will be better saved for the next threshold. It's just good to have a little bit of wiggle room left over. Now that we have some better weapons, we can take a look at where our armor can be improved. We can also carry over the 520k that I deliberately left behind. So we're looking at 15.5 mil to play around with. This amount of money is almost exactly enough for an amulet of anguish or torture. Unless you had a specific activity in mind, I'm not going to recommend getting one of them just yet. To better spread out our money, we're going to take a look at what we can improve everywhere. Looking at melee, the two major upgrades here will be the Fury Amulet and the Berserker Ring. On top of that, I would recommend picking up two pieces of Barrow's Armor. These aren't items you always want to use since they do degrade over time, but both are great items for mid-level bossing and certain Slayer monsters. I chose the Guthin's body since you'll want the full set later anyway, and the stats on it are the same as the other Barrow's chest plates. And I chose the Varrox plate skirt because it almost has the same defensive stats as the other Barrow's legs, but with the additional plus 4 prayer bonus. Moving on to range, our main purchase will be the Archer Ring, which is a little bit expensive right now. We're also going to get into a few pieces of Blessed Dehyde. They aren't that much different from Black Dehyde stat-wise, really it's just the prayer bonus that's nice. The real reason behind picking them is for the coverage in God Wars Dungeon. You can really mix and match for what you personally need, but I've always used a Sarah Top, Zami Legs, and Zami Boots, and it almost always works out for the God coverage I need. Once again, we are going to give Magic the Shaft here. We are spending a lot of money on the Aram's Legs, but it really isn't a huge upgrade. Honestly, the Boot and Ring upgrade could be ignored too. Yeah, the Magic Accuracy they provide doesn't make a difference a lot of the time, but despite that, they still aren't completely useless, so I figured we might as well throw them in since we have the cash. The boots help with the blood spells a little bit too. If we add up how much all the new stuff costs, it's still going to leave us with almost 670k left over. Once again, I will leave you guys with this money to play around with as you see fit. I'll be saving it for the next section personally. Alternatively, you could get one or two of these items if you feel like they meet your needs. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the Trident vs. Smokestaff Tome of Fire. The Smokestaff is gonna go. We're selling it. Typically, the Trident will start doing more DPS than the Smokestaff around level 85 magic, so in my opinion, there isn't a real reason to keep the Smokestaff. The money we get back from it will help out with the other purchases. At this point, I'm also going to assume you have a Rune Pouch. You can buy one, but I'm gonna recommend you get it one of the free ways. Other than that, we are rounding out our Aram set and picking up the Preserve Prayer if you haven't already. Swinging over to melee, we aren't making any base set upgrades. I feel that investing in a Tent Whip is a good move here to push more damage when bossing, even if it is a degradable weapon. I would also complete the Guthin set. The sustain from it is amazing for certain Slayer monsters and for bossing, you know, like in God Wars Dungeon. And I think we can get the Crystal Halberd. It is more of a niche spec weapon that's best used for last hitting large mobs. When you can use it, it's nice, but usually the Dragon Dagger will be better because it attacks faster and uses less spec energy. Shooting over to range, we're making our most expensive move. We're getting an Anguish. I feel like range is used more consistently than melee at lower levels, and the Anguish upgrade here from a Fury is more pronounced than a Torture upgrade would be for melee. We're also going to get a Kirill's Bottom here. I really wanted to throw the top in as well, but we just didn't have the money for it at the end of this tier. The Kirill's top and bottom are usually only picked for their defensive stats in certain situations. Corporal Beast, Kraken, Nex. So I prefer Bless Dehyde to stay in our base set. Adding up all of the new swag, our total comes to a little over 25 mil, which leaves us with about 130k to spare. I think we're pretty evenly balanced all around here. You know, maybe melee is falling a little bit behind, but hey. There's always more cash in the next tier to play around with. One hundred mil. We have effectively traded someone at the GE and doubled our money here. Give yourselves a pat on the back for making it to the one hundred mil tier. There's not too many. You're wasting XP. I'll tell you right now, 
we're dumping most of our money into melee. The torture is an obvious upgrade here, but make sure to hang on to the fury. That's a surprise for later. We've been lacking a decent crush weapon here, so we're gonna get a Zami Hosta. You know, actually, the Hosta is an amazing weapon with a ton of coverage. It's a stab weapon, it's a crush weapon, it has some of the best defensive stats for a one-handed weapon, it can be converted into a Zami Spear for a corp, and it's really cheap right now. I have a whole video on this weapon, I think it's fantastic. I also think we should pick up a Serp Helm. There are a surprising number of bosses that can poison or venom you, and this will prevent that from happening. It has a better strength bonus in the knee it's not, and it's also used sometimes with range and magic. Lastly, it's time to get a Bandos God Sword. The price on it has been a little bit high lately, but it's just a great spec weapon to have in your arsenal. While you will certainly use it for solo bossing, the main reason I chose to pick it up now though was that it makes you way more useful in a group boss situation. Even if you aren't doing a ton of damage because your gear is lacking elsewhere, you'll be helping me do more damage, which is more important. Defense reducing specs equal good. Since that was most of our money, range and magic don't have too much different here. It should be no surprise from the last section that I want the Kirill's top now in this tier. A dragon crossbow isn't used a ton, but when you do need it, you'll now be able to use dragon bolts with it instead of just runite ones. And, for magic, getting augury can be nice for something like Zora, the gauntlet, or raiding. When all is said and done, we have 700k to spare. I think you've noticed by now that I like to leave you guys with a little bit of money left over. You know, having precise numbers on everything isn't super important to me. That is going to wrap up this tier though. Chugging straight along, an extra 50 mil has somehow come into our possession. Despite that, we are only getting three new toys. Fuck you, Melee, you get nothing. The big purchase here is for range. Rigor's on the menu, boys. When I bought Rigor, it was over 40 mil, and I thought that was a steal. It's a massive DPS increase that's well worth the investment at this point. You know, other than that, I thought we should make an upgrade to the Magic Base Set with the Tormented Bracelet. And if you haven't already, get yourself a cannon. It helps provide some of the best XP an hour for Slayer, and you can use it at a few bosses actually to increase DPS. We're actually going to have almost 2 mil left over. While there are certainly pieces of gear you can buy with this money, I don't feel strongly enough about them to make a purchase. It can be better to save money for more expensive upgrades down the road. I'm going to preface this section with a warning that it might be seen as controversial. We have about 102 mil to spend, and it can be used in a lot of different ways. I'm all for open discussion and debate, so at any point, let me know how you feel about my picks, or what you would have done differently. I feel as though our range set is really strong right now for how much money we have. Blowpipe and Rigor with the Dragon Crossbow in the back pocket can handle almost anything that comes your way when you need range. For this reason, I'm not spending any more here. We are going to spend a little bit on magic though. The Eladinus Ward is one of the last items we can get that directly increases our magic strength. The only real thing of note is that it has less prayer bonus than the Book of Darkness, but I still think it's worth it. Melee is where I chose to focus our spending. The Bandos Tacits and Ferocious Gloves will give us some good strength bonuses, and the Tacits will count as Bandos Protection down in God Wars Dungeon. Asmumpton's Fang is what I wanted to buy here. The price has been fluctuating recently, but it seems to be hovering around the 60 mil area. Even with the nerf it received, it's an amazing weapon where you can use it. Now I've checked DPS calculations with various gears, levels, monsters, and it beats a rapier most of the time while being cheaper. It's still going to be a little behind a Dragon Hunter Lance with dragons, but it's not limited to just those dragons. It's also going to be better than a Zami Hosta pretty much anywhere for stab. And of course, inside Tombs of a Masket, it is king for melee at higher invocation levels. I mean, just look at the wiki on how versatile it is. Don't sleep on this weapon, I bought it when it was 160 mil and I don't regret losing that money on it. Okay, maybe I do a little. After the dust settles on our spending, we'll have a solid 1.2-ish mil remaining. At the next tier of 350 mil, we again find ourselves at a crossroad. I'm going to continue along the path we started in the last tier and put some good money down on melee. With all of our picks thus far, melee has had a huge reach on the content you can tackle, and since it reaches the most, I wanted to continue making it stronger. The face guard was an easy pick for me, but the Bandos chestplate was not, as it's only a defensive upgrade. 
I almost went with the Primordial Boots instead, but I just couldn't justify 27 mil for a plus one strength bonus quite yet. I imagine by now you're taking on some hard hitting bosses, and the defensive bonus from the Bandos Chestplate is going to be noteworthy. I'm also going to recommend picking up a Ceridome and God Sword. Admittedly, it is not a top pick for most bossing scenarios, but it is amazing for Slayer. It allows you to save money on supplies, stay longer on tasks without banking, and it just makes specking more fun. I bought this for myself even earlier than this tier, and it's just been a personal favorite of mine. I figure by now it's probably time to pick up a Dragonfire Shield as well. Typically a defender with an extended super anti-fire is enough protection when fighting dragons, but there's still some occasions where a Dragonfire Shield can be preferred, like at Wyverns or even King Black Dragon. On top of that, it's just a good tank offhand to have when you need it. We do still have a little bit of money, and I wanted to invest in a Ring of Suffering and a Light Bearer. The Suffering is just a straightforward tank ring with a good prayer bonus. It's also amazing for Zora. The Light Bearer on the other hand might seem a little bit strange this early, but I think it's worth it. I would say most people associate it with a Dragon Claw and Zerite crossbow spec, but I've used it in other places with great success. And of course, it is top tier for TOA. This is going to be the easiest tier for me, and the shortest one for you to listen to. We have almost exactly enough money to add on a Bofa with the crystal top and bottom. The Blowpipe and Dragon Crossbow will still have their uses, but when the Bofa is used over those weapons, it will be a big DPS increase. We don't have enough money for the Helm just yet, but I think it's okay because it's not as impactful as the top and bottom are. And there is always the next tier. Alright, with another 250 mil added to the bank, we can get a lot of impactful upgrades. Once again, I'm dumping a lot of money into melee. The simple reason is that melee bossing, as a whole, requires more equipment all around for coverage, and in a lot of situations, a melee spec is used alongside other combat styles. Getting in a Vernic Hilt and Prims here really rounds out our base melee set armor to almost best in slot until we can get things that are terribly more expensive. At this point, I think we should also get a Dragon Hunter weapon. The Fang has been decent coverage for dragons, but the Lance will be a straight upgrade for them. Now, I prefer the Dragon Hunter Lance, but if you want the Dragon Hunter crossbow, you can certainly do that instead. It does cost a little bit more money, so I'd recommend not picking up the Prims to be able to afford it. Adding on to our spec weapons, a Dragon Warhammer plus Tyrannical Ring is great to have in the bank. It's not as expensive as it used to be, and there are still situations where it's going to be preferred over a BGS. Lastly, we're going to be taking our Fury in the bank and upgrading it to a Blood Fury. It's not usually best in slot, and it degrades over time, but it is great for learning difficult content that requires melee. And personally, the healing from it really helped me out at Fosani's Nightmare, Nex, and TOA. Moving on to range, we're only getting two new pieces. Obviously finishing off the Crystal Armor from the last tier, but also picking up the best in slot range offhand. It's not used a lot, but it's a very small portion of our bank at this point, and it can help boost our DPS with a crossbow. Magic is also going to snag an upgrade with the imbued heart. It's quite expensive right now because of the saturated heart coming out with the new boss, but if you're using a powered staff like a trident, it will give you a solid DPS boost that's better than full ancestral, which is almost six times as expensive. Adding everything up, we are slightly over budget, but I'm going to cheat because in previous tiers I've left you guys with a lot of money left over. I'm calling it in now, and I'm using it. We have finally made it to 1 billion coins. Our gear is now thick, and some people now consider us rich. Of course, there is always more gear to buy though. For our final look at melee, we'll start by grabbing an Abyssal Bludgeon. Our Crush weapon has been lacking and this will boost it up, but honestly, Crush isn't used a ton and there's usually a good workaround, like using Arclight at Cerberus or Chris Partisan at KQ. I'm also going to pick up the Justiciar set, I really like it for tanking for the homies. It's literally the best gear for it and it also counts as a Sarah protection item in God Wars. We are finally making a melee DPS spec weapon upgrade with the Dragon Claws even if they are really expensive right now. They output crazy damage and synergize extremely well with the Light Bearer. Range is actually not going to have any upgrades. What we have is what we have. 
I don't feel like the price of armor gear or pagasians are worth it for the small offensive increase you get from them. The extra defense bonus will be missed though. Some of you might disagree with me, but I just feel like it's better to skip Arma, eventually save up for the Tebow, than grab Masori instead. Lastly, we have our final magic layout. The Sang Staff is the main purchase here, and we were able to squeeze in the Eternal Boots. The Sang Staff is a very slight DPS upgrade over a Trident. The main draw to it is the utility you get from the healing effect. With Blood Runes being so cheap right now, the Sang Staff doesn't cost too much more to cast than the Trident either, and it can help with those challenging encounters. With that, we are technically done with the 1 billion coin distribution. We're actually over budget a little bit, but you know, what's 260k between friends, am I right? There are a few honorable mentions I wanted to address though. Really the big three tier 80 weapons are the main ones I wanted to go over. The rapier in particular, you know, it's used for melee training and is pretty useful at stab bossing. I felt as though both training and stab bossing have better options to go with though. And do we really want to spend 76 mil to kill Slayer monsters faster? But it was really close for me to not put it in. Other than that, the Blade of Saildor is almost never used honestly, and the Inquisitor Mace just costs too much money unless you're focusing on a crush boss like the Nightmare. Anything else I didn't mention is probably due to it costing too much, even if it is a good item, not doing enough for the price that it's at, or just being too niche of an item, even if it's invaluable when you do need it. I'm looking at you, Spectral Spirit Shield at Cerberus. That is going to do it though. It seems like YouTubers end their videos really abruptly now, so like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I'm live right now on YouTube if you want to catch my stream. Have a good day. Hope you enjoyed. I love you. See you later.